Well, hello, good people. This is the entertainment, and as usual, we have a very interesting guest tonight. His name is Chef Week Segaye, and he is a contemporary dancer, somebody who uses his body and his movements to inspire us and to take us to new levels of understanding. He creates art with his movement. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Shafiq Segaye. Hello, this is Miss Natty calling you from the entertainment. Hello. <laughs> Are you happy to do a little interview with us? Yeah, why not? <laughs> Oh, amazing, amazing. So tell me a little bit about yourself. What kind of an artist are you? Well, my name is Shafiq Segei. I am a contemporary dancer and I'm in the performing arts sector. Okay. And yeah. what what inspired you to become a contemporary dancer? Well, uh, honestly, I think... Uh, life, but, um, yeah, you know, I, when I saw, I, I, I went to the National Theatre some time back, and uh, when I saw people move, it's, um, something very unique and interesting about it, and uh, it looked challenging on the eyes, but, um, yeah, I wanted to give it a try, and I was very happy that there were a couple of platforms for me to try out because I think there were like three different types of dancing groups. There was the Latin, the Latin flavor Uganda. There was the Taylor Dance Company, and there was the um, uh, there was something also called a stepping stone. And, uh, the Latin flavor was doing more salsa. Then the Kega was doing African contemporary, and um, this stepping stone uh, was more like bringing young dancers together to discover themselves. So then I kind of picked interest there, and yeah, when I started doing it, I felt like it was something very nice. But then way back, I I got really uh, I I got to understand that I want to take this as a serious thing because when you can get never serious, you know, like okay, in Africa, people even when you you, you are serious, the people around it around it look at it like it's not serious. So then, with the help of my wife, who was my friend by then, I went out of Uganda. And then I go to study dance as dance, and from there, I, that's when I realized that I want to do it as contemporary dance rather than just African contemporary, but more like getting the bigger or the broader version of all these dance um, styles. Because for me, contemporary combines so many movement languages, and this is why I chose to become a contemporary dancer rather than a specific, let's say, African contemporary dancer or a Latin dancer. Because contemporary dance is like an umbrella of, of all dance um, styles. Whoever has something can fit in there, and that's why what inspired me to really become a contemporary dancer. Yeah. That's amazing, Shafiq. So tell me, were your family supportive of your choice? Uh, well, I think, I have to be honest with you, they were not, but I think it was from the fear of them, um, like, you know, because, uh, they're like, okay, what are you doing, dance? What is that? Um, I don't know what I'm <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, you know, are you gonna become a sports kid or get a Fukamiya now? Are you <laughs> like what is all this, you know? And yeah. yeah, to be honest, I I don't think they were supportive really. Yeah. At all. You know. But I uh, yeah, I just had to keep my head up straight and I went for it and I'm very glad it uh I can reap the fruits right now because not so many of us really go through it. I just wanna say that God has been on by my side and you know, uh, for me, at least a lot has worked through this kind of thing. I know and, it doesn't and, work for everybody. And and tell me, Shafiq, who encouraged you? Who 
um, gave you the courage to continue and and uh, follow your inspiration? Well, I think that has to be my wife 24/7 because um, you know, when you, yeah, she she you know because I had a, like I was performing a dance solo in the National Theatre. I think it was the first week. 2000, if I'm not mistaken, 10 or 11. And, uh, you know, she came down with her mom, but we didn't know each other by then and she had a camera. And and she watched my solo, which then was, I don't know, you know, <laughs> okay, I was on stage, I was trying to move on stage, and then she had a camera, a very small mini camera, and then she recorded it in the audience, but I had no idea she was recording it. Then um, after like a week later, we met again at the National Theatre through the Latin dance, like there was a salsa Sunday there. Through and then she's like, "Hey, you! I saw you performing, and I recorded your solo. If you want to have a look at it, you can give me a flash drive, and I can put it on it." And then we kept, and then uh, we kept talking, and then she came up with the idea, like, "Okay, you know what? This this time of the year, there is something called So You Think You Can Dance." And it's happening in the Netherlands. So if we could probably send this video, we can ask them to go and join. And yeah, I don't want to bore you with the details, but we went back and forth. And because of her, I went to say, think you can dance in the Netherlands. And from there, I go to do my dance education in the Amsterdam High School for the Arts. So if what? it wasn't for her, I don't think it would have happened. So what a wonderful, family. wonderful testimony! That's the power of women. That's the power of women for sure. <laughs> yeah, so, so what do your family think now? Well, um, yeah, I don't know what the family thinks now, but I think they are very proud, you know, and um. And they understand that the decision I made then uh, was a good decision. Even when I was young, uh, I felt like for me it was the right decision through my heart, but they never really believed in me. So, or they never trusted the decision I was making, you know, as parents, and they always wanted you to go some the other direction. So, I think they're proud now. That's I would, wonderful. I would say that I feel, I feel, I think they're proud now, yep. Yeah. That's wonderful. So, yeah. what what are your plans for Uganda for for the youth of Uganda? Well, uh, yeah, I've been talking with my wife, and uh, my plan is really to build like um um an art center. But I don't know uh, if, if when God gives me life, that is what I want to do. And it doesn't only need to include dance, but I want to build like really a dance school. Because what the way I look at it, I'm calling it a dance school, but I think it would be more like an art center. You know, they are, there was a sector teaching music, there was a sector teaching dance, there was a sector teaching um, singing, there was a sector teaching acting. So like a complete version of a dance school, you know, like when it falls the curriculum, you wake up in the morning, you go to a dance school and you pay, you know, tuition to go there and it has a curriculum that, after four years, you graduate, and you are somewhere yeah. that you can then be on the world level of going to, I don't know, somewhere you do an audition and you can be taken as a dancer. So that, that is amazing. my goal. But, yeah, it and makes I've, sense. I've heard something called Calabash. Is there something around Calabash that inspires you? Um... The color, the calabash. Uh, that is the yeah. The this is the how is it called in Uganda? This is the yeah. The, no, because I think with Shafiq Sekalemba we did um he there was I think uh, when I met him he he had a song and that song had very it had it had an information that for me was relating to how we grew up and I think he played it through a carabash or he had um some connection to it. So um but I'm yet to really think about it to give you a correct answer because I'm kind right now in the middle and I can't give you a straight answer right now. <laughs> well that's very honest of you. So yeah. so tell me Shafiq, who inspires you? Apart from your well, good wife of course. Well, um, I mean, 
when when I started when I started dancing apart from my wife, you know, uh, like the the world inspires. And uh, when Shafiq also started singing, um, he had like. I mean, he still has it, of course, but uh, he had this amazing voice and he was singing folk music. And I Which felt is like. the music, right? Yeah, Shafiq the music. Oh, Shafiq the Sekalembe. Okay, he's yeah. the music, sorry. He's the yeah. music that is brand. Yeah, and he had this amazing voice singing folk music and he could put love to it, you know. And when I saw him playing guitar and just singing, he had so much to give. And um, yeah, he, yeah, it's just he has talent combined with pure genius and there's so much he can do with his voice and i I actually i even told him you know what dude we should make like something like a collaboration but as the word tore us apart somehow it never happened but anyway yeah it's so kind kind. as well and uh i think the the other thing can be uh life and they, you know, what comes up because right now I can just look at something and I'm like, okay, wow, that inspires me to make something through movement. Or oh, people sing songs that you feel touching and you'll be like, okay, I can just use a verse of that and just make a small clip of movement. Or, oh, yeah, so yeah, things around the world inspire me also somehow. That's wonderful. Situations, to be correct. Situations, yeah. So tell me, what what is your greatest ambition right now, Shafiq? What would you love to achieve? Well, what I would love to achieve, um, I, I, I want to create my own dance company, you know, but a dance company that does not only um, combine dancers, because in this case, when we say dancers, we're talking about movers, but I want to have a dance company where I would, in a layman's language, be self-contained. Like have someone who knows how to make music, who knows how to play an instrument, who knows how to do poetry, who knows how, so that when you need to do something, it's like a whole buffet of talent in one. Like, you know, orchestra and, yeah, like a buffet of talent put together that can do movement, that can do... um, stage performances through singing, through dancing, and through poetry, but that has to be as one. So all these things have to be contributing towards one one center, which is delivering art to the audience and performance, like a whole full performance of everything, where it's not like you don't start at a need, but when someone sees it, he feels content, like that was a complete performance of art, combined. Oh, that that. sounds so exciting. And I think for sure we're going to collaborate because it sounds like the dream that that we have as well um, as as artists to combine everybody together. So as a last question, Shafiq, I would ask Mm. you, um, Mm. what do you find challenging right now? Right now? Well, uh, I think it's a big question for me because I could, like, break it down in so many things. What I find challenging is all the ambitions I have. I want to be able to do them in my home country, which is Uganda. But the problem is the art sector is not looked upon as something that can deliver pure genius to the people. So if you are in an art industry in Uganda, it's like you're in a dead zone or, like, People don't even think about you. They don't even want to know who you are. Artists now, and especially dancers, and I would say upcoming singers, are used as, I don't know, cutting razors or something. They are not given priority, and even when they are given something to perform, you find that someone is speaking when someone is performing, someone is on the phone. When they don't have, they, they don't have, uh, I don't know, they don't have, what is the word I'm, I'm looking for? Respect? Um, yeah, they don't have respect for the people performing. They think that they're helping them. 
And for me, I find that very challenging because in, even if I stage a performance, whether it's outside or that it's inside, I, I shouldn't be able to tell you that, hey, you, you have to switch off your phone because the performance is starting. Or you cannot just, you know, call someone when the performance is starting. Because I feel like this is the big thing and also because there is no funding in Uganda. It, it would be very much a pity to make a performance in Uganda and have funding from, let's say, the British Embassy or the German Embassy. And why not have funding from the Italian government, funding the arts of its own people? That I find very challenging. That's, that's a very, very good point, actually. It's yeah. something that we should all work on as the yeah. artistic community here. So, a final so. word of advice from you for the people um, wanting to, to get into the arts and make the arts um, something that they're passionate about. What's your final word of advice? Well, I think we should think that artists are one family. And if you do something for art, you don't do it for yourself, but you do it for the upcoming artists and you do it for it's, we sh I feel like what we need to do is to pave way for the upcoming generation. So when you do something, you shouldn't always look at yourself to be recognized like, okay, uh, yeah, someone started this thing and you always want to be talked about, but just do it for the good of art so that art stays even when you are gone. And I think this will be very helpful so that all artists get um, a chance to showcase their work. But if we all think that, okay, I started art and I can only, when they talk about art, they have to talk about me, then I think we're not gonna go anywhere. But if we just do art for the love of art and not for the love of us being recognized, I feel like we will go somewhere further than where we are now. Well, those are great words of advice. Thank you so much, Shafiq. It's been great talking to you. Thank you for your I appreciate time. appreciate that very much. All right. Be blessed. Thank you. Be blessed too. Okay, we have heard wise words and inspirational speech from Shafiq Segaye, a contemporary movement dance performer. And he has encouraged us and asked us, urged us to take our artistry seriously and to be focused on what it is that we can showcase and what it is that we can learn from the artists in Uganda. He's giving us his words, his thoughts and his inspiration. This has been the entertainment and I hope you were entertained.